So I'm here at the Christchurch model train show, which has been running the whole weekend. With a lot of interesting models, standard model trains, all sides of sizes. But what I'm really here for is to show you what I've been up to, which is of course Lego trains. This is the V100 from the uh, Deutsche Bahn, the German Railways. It was built between 1958 and 1963, and my grandfather rode one of these. And this is a diesel engine, and I will take the engine out because it had to make place for the batteries. The first thing to consider when transforming the V100 is that it uses a different track. So the normal Lego track is six wide, this is 12 wide, so you have to make your own tracks, and which is easy for strides, but it's a little bit more complicated if you want to do curves. So, yeah, the wheel distance is just very different, which requires special tracks. The next challenge for motorizing the V100 is the contact between the rail and the track, the train, which is, of course, the wheels. And the wheels have the problem that the original Lego ones are far too small, that would never fit on here and would look ridiculous. And the biggest wheel you can get from Lego is, it's okay, but it's nowhere even close to what you need. Because the original size of what is on there are these dishes and they are much bigger and if you don't have the size, it will not look okay. And this, the dish itself can't work, it's not made for running on tracks, so this is not a proper wheel, so you must find a replacement. Now, I found a company that does plastic injection molded um, uh, wheels, um, and they're really beautiful, really nice, and they have the right size, so they are big enough for the train to look okay. Um, this is kind of what you need. But of course that's not enough because you also need to have traction. And plastic on plastic doesn't work very well, so you need to have a rubber band that goes over the wheel. Now these rubber bands, finding the right size and flat ones is a bit of a challenge. I found these from a tattoo shop. I don't know why they're being used for tattooing, but this is it. So rubber bands are essential. Then you need to have a motor to run the whole thing. And Lego, of course, has a Lego train motor, but it's very flat, which is nice. It's very fast, but it doesn't have a lot of torque, and that's the problem. The Viva 100 is heavy, and does require a lot of torque to move it at all. So this motor probably will not cut it because it's, not, it's too fast and doesn't have enough torque. Now, I then chose for this particular uh, Lego Mindstorm motor because it is geared down. So it has a lot of torque, not so much speed, and it's very flat. So the height of this is, is roughly the same, which is great, so you can actually get it under the train and motorize it. And you need to have two of these to run it, and they also, yeah, they're small and compact enough so they fit next to each other. So here we see one motor, two motor, and the light sensor um, from the bottom. So the motors are in parallel, and then the lights are in there in the back. And that works. Good enough. Maybe I can just switch it on, you can see the wheels go. So, now it's rotating, obviously. And that's the motor going. The next thing to do, is, of course, is to plug them into a microcontroller. And uh, this, for example, is the Mindstone one, or a little spike, as they call these days. And then you can control it and put also a light center on it. This is a linear train, it goes forth and back. So I'm using a light center plugged into the microcontroller so that I can detect where the train is and then stop and reverse when necessary. Which brings us to the next problem, batteries. Um, this one has a built-in rechargeable battery and these are really difficult and expensive to come by. So a much better way to deal with that, of course, is to use a power bank. So in here, we have got, I used the Technicup as the microcontroller, and I've got a power bank for uh, power, and it's um, just USB, and then I've got a special adapter that allows 
me to use um, USB power in the Technicup microcontroller. Well, let's see if I can get this one out. Ooh, right, here we go. So here you see the microcontroller and the adapter for USB power. One thing I learned today is that, actually I learned that yesterday is that I only ran the motors at 50% power and that's explained why it was so slow. So I've now adjusted the speed to 70% up from 50 and we see the, the train's now much more competent in uh, riding across the slight uneven surface here. Um, I still have to add the cover to it and I think if I would add it up to 100% it'll be just as fast as the, as the little train but I don't really want to do that because there's a chance it might overshoot and then uh, we'll run into the neighboring exhibit. And here's the computer interface where we can set the speed um, using pie bricks. Um, and it runs autonomously, you don't need to have the computer here. Um, it's just for download and starting. Um, and once it's downloaded, you can just start it, uh, the microcontroller, even without the presence of the computer. So it doesn't have to be here, so I can just close it and it'll be just fine. I built this stand for the Wii 100 so that the wheels can come off so that you can rotate it around. And then at the same time, you can move it around to the edge of the table and then work on the bottom and reattach some of the things that fall off. Now I've been running the V100 now for one and a half days and so far pretty robust. The additional power boost was definitely a good idea. And yeah, one battery pack and then one USB power bank lasts for like a whole day almost. So I'm down to 72%. So that's pretty good. Um, sometimes it just misses the colors. I don't know why. It seems like the, the hub actually crashes because when I try to hit the stop button, it wouldn't stop and I really have to shut it down completely before it moves again. So, and of course the, the plow in the front comes off because it's a display model. It's not meant to be robust. So that's something to maybe improve for the next time. And yeah, the kids love it. Um, draws a lot of attention. They all can connect to it because it's Lego and they all have Lego at home. So that gives it some inspiration. So yeah, so far it's doing quite well. Uh, the V100, fun. All right, we're almost at the end of the show and it's time to do some experiments. So, so far the motor's been running at 65%. Now I want to yank it up to 100 and see how fast we can really go with these two motors. And uh, this is dangerous and I'm probably going to regret it. But let's see what we can do. Okay, we're paired up. And 100%. Off we go. Whoa, <laughs> please stop. Please stop. Okay. So far it's working. Okay. It's working. And you see that this is now as fast as the little train. It's actually faster than the little train. It's going to overtake now. Wow. So two motors, definitely enough. One battery pack, one microcontroller, and you can really go fast.